So most people think that insulin resistance only affects people living with pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, but you say that it affects everyone living with diabetes. So why is that the case? Okay, so you're right. Uh, you know, lots of medical professionals um, will associate uh, insulin resistance with only prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Uh, and a lot of people living with diabetes also make the same mistake. It turns out that there's sort of three different flavors of diabetes, the way I like to think about it. The first one is, is autoimmune diabetes, which is type 1 and type 1.5. So type 1 is what I have. It's what Robbie has. It's what you develop generally as a juvenile when your uh, pancreas, when the beta cells in your pancreas uh, experience an autoimmune attack and can no longer manufacture insulin. Type 1.5 diabetes is the same condition, except it happens later in life. So it's adult onset, slow progressing type 1 diabetes. Now, the second flavor of diabetes is called lifestyle diabetes. This is prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, and this right here is most strongly associated with insulin resistance, just as I previously described. And then the third sort of flavor of diabetes are, are two flavors of diabetes that actually happen to women. The first is gestational diabetes that happens during pregnancy. And then this, the, the next one is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, technically speaking, PCOS is not a version of diabetes. So I do not mean to insinuate that people with, with PCOS have diabetes. What I am saying is that people with gestational diabetes and polycystic ovarian syndrome are at a, uh, have a lot of insulin resistance. And so as a result of this, these two can be grouped together because they affect primarily females and um, they both um, are, have insulin resistance at their core. Now, insulin resistance is the central connecting puzzle piece that communicates with type one diabetes, that communicates with lifestyle diabetes, that communicates with gestational diabetes and PCOS. And so insulin resistance is this central node and um, whenever you increase your risk for insulin or when you increase insulin resistance, that means that your life as a person with any version of autoimmune diabetes, lifestyle diabetes, or uh, you know, gestational diabetes or PCOS becomes more complicated. But not only that, the, the beauty of this is that insulin resistance is also a central node that, that, that controls or influences many different uh, chronic diseases within your body. So, you know, all of these versions of diabetes that I just discussed are right up here on the top right. But the more insulin resistant you become, the higher your risk for cancer, for coronary artery disease, for hypertension and atherosclerosis, for obesity, for high cholesterol, for things like fatty liver, which is a huge, huge, huge problem in the world of diabetes. Now, people who develop more insulin resistance also increase their risk for Alzheimer's disease or cognitive decline, as well as peripheral neuropathy blindness, kidney failure, retinopathy, and erectile dysfunction in men. So it's very important to understand that insulin resistance is, is not just something that affects people with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. In fact, there are millions of people, if not now maybe even close to 100 million people in the United States that are living with insulin resistance and have no idea. This is fascinating. Now here's the million dollar question. How long does it take to reverse insulin resistance? Ooh, great question. Phenomenal question. Okay. So <clears throat> when we talk about reversing insulin resistance, really what we're talking about is eating a low fat plant-based whole food diet so that you can clear the accumulated fatty acids that have been stored inside of your muscle. Okay. It's everywhere inside of your muscle and it's also inside of your liver. Now, does that process take a day? Does it take a week? Does it take a month? Does it take five years? Right? How long does that process take? Now, the answer is it depends. It depends on a number of things, okay? It can take a very short time. It can take a very long time. The things that will determine the speed at which insulin resistance is reversed in your body include, you know, what is your current diet? How much fatty foods have you been eating over what period of time? Are you eating a, you know, maybe like a, a Mediterranean diet that's got maybe like a medium quantity of total fat and maybe a lot of it's coming from plant-based fats? Or are you eating a ketogenic diet that's very high in fat and a, a lot of it is coming from animal-based sources which can, it contains more saturated fat? The two of those are completely different scenarios. The person who's in the ketogenic category is gonna have a, uh, it's gonna take longer for them to reverse insulin resistance. Uh, so another thing that's really de determines how long it takes is your, your body weight. If you're 
if you're at your at your normal ideal body weight, then it's going to be a lot easier to reverse insulin resistance than if you're 20, 30, 40, 100 pounds overweight. How active are you? Do you move your body on a daily basis? Yes or no. Are you moving your body for 15 minutes a day with a moderate heart rate? Or are you an endurance runner and you're running for four hours a day at an elevated heart rate? Okay. How much accumulated environmental contaminants do you have in your body and your adipose tissue as a result of your occupation, as a result of eating packaged, refined, and processed foods over the course of time? Okay? Another thing that affects your level of insulin resistance is the status of your microbiome. And you're going to hear this in our summit from other speakers who talk about the fact that your microbiome is, you know, think of it as the, the central, your central, uh, your immune system is that's where it's housed inside of your large intestine. And so if your microbiome has, is experiencing what's called dysbiosis, and there's a whole collection of pathogenic bacteria inside of there that are wreaking havoc on your immune system, they're also going to wreak immune, I'm sorry, they're also going to wreak havoc on your ability to control your blood glucose. So if your microbiome is completely out of kilter, then that's going to take a while to sort of, uh, you know, recolonize your gut properly and restore insulin sensitivity. Are you a stressed individual? If you're very high stress, then you're probably cranking out a lot of cortisol and a lot of epinephrine on a daily basis. And the result is that you're gonna be living with a chronically elevated blood glucose. If you reduce your stress levels, that's gonna have a really large impact on your ability to become more insulin sensitive. And um, so that being said, there's all these factors, but what we do see over and over and over and over and over again is that people living with all forms of diabetes are actually able to start to see improvements in their blood glucose in a very short period of time. Now, when I say short period of time, I mean within the first 24 to 48 hours is usually where most people start to see better numbers on their blood glucose meter. Okay, does that mean the insulin resistance is gone? No, not at all. What it means is that insulin resistance is starting to decrease. So the first 24 to 48 hours, that's what I experienced. Uh, and that's what a lot of people in our coaching program experience. And then it gets better after three days and then a week and then a month and then six months and then a year. So if I had to give an average length of time, I might say six months to a year to come fully reverse insulin resistance altogether. But all along the way, you're starting to see improvements in your blood glucose and a reduction in your need for insulin as well as oral medications.